Hi folks, welcome back to our roofing project. We're on the home straight and in today's video, I'm gonna show you everything that was involved in getting these chimneys watertight. So we know we're getting close to the end when we're talking about aprons and flashings and soakers and more terminology which I've never really come across before starting work on this roof. So we've got two chimney stacks and they're slightly different sizes but the whole process is very much the same. The first thing to go in at the bottom is an apron. Now while it is possible to boss an apron out of one piece of lead, it's far easier to get one welded. So Lewis, who did our bay window at the front, offered to make these up and they're made up to suit the width of the chimney. You can order them online as well, but otherwise find a local lead worker and they'll be able to make one up to suit. Plus, as you can see, it is super satisfying to watch back on video after. And later on in this video, there is gonna be some more welding when Lewis came back to sew up the edges of our flashings but more on that later so as you can see that's going to slot in to that chase underneath that overstepping brick and also it wraps up around the side and that's basically our first soaker and then we'll alternate between that and the slates all the way up to the ridge so i can't take any credit for that because it's all down to lewis's perfection as far as getting all the angles and the welding right but a little bit of trimming off the top of this section so it slots into that chase that's already there and then a few wedges to lock it in tight then our soakers will go in next. You can see at this point is where I'm measuring to cut down the apron. I just need it to go up the wall as much as it can before it goes into that chase. So it's just a case of cutting it down, leaving about 25 millimeters of lead that will fold into that chase. And then we can get our wedges in there and seal it all up. Okay, with the apron in place, now we can move back to slates. And from here on up, we're just alternating slate and soaker. The soakers are just those folded sections of lead that we made up a few weeks back and in this case they're 240 mil lead folded in half. Uh, you can probably get away with a little bit less but we wanted as much cover as possible bearing in mind it's quite exposed up there. And then working our way up we're just tapping uh, a nail into the top of each batten to hold the soaker in place and then another slate goes on top. Okay, so we've got our aprons in, we've got our soakers in, and now we're on to flashing. So at this point, we've got slates all the way to the ridge, and this is now gonna be what chase, is chased into the brickwork and give our vertical section to our lead work. So I'm just replicating everything that Lewis showed me in a previous video. If you wanna see this in a bit more detail, then you can head back and watch that, and I'll link to it at the end. But essentially, this is just a one-piece step flashing. It's gonna be coming down the side on each stack. So we've got eight of these to do in total. Now you can do this in individual step flashings, which I guess is a little bit easier perhaps, um, but this is where I'm going and it's a nice sort of quite traditional look and seems to match other old properties around here. And would you believe it, it fit first time. Fortunately, because I had eight of them to do, so after about one or two of these, I really got into the swing of it. And over the next day or two, I could just spend an hour on the roof and uh, chip away at this. These are fixed into place with some little lead wedges, little rolls um, that are just bolstered into the chase there, holds everything nice and tight. 
and then we'll work our way around onto the next section of the roof. Quick glance at Lewis's hips, oi oi, and we're up onto the other stack. Now you'll notice that I left them long at the end, these flashings, and that was intentional because I wasn't quite sure on the best approach to take it around the corner. They're not the most straightforward of stacks to, to work around. In the end, although I did have a crack at bossing it around, uh, Lewis said he'd pop around after work on a couple of days and he was able to weld a section on, which was not the planned route, but actually it was really handy to have Lewis come around and check over all my other work as well, just so I could sleep easy and not have rain dripping on my head at night. probably sound like a broken record now but another thank you to Lewis for coming and rescuing me on this one and just making sure that everything was finished how it was. Uh, it gets dark pretty quick this time of year and it wasn't long before I had video lights out and Paul Lewis was up there in the rain and the dark which was far from ideal. Anyway job done and I was finally able to get the last few ridge tiles on. The ridge tiles I will cover in another video but here I thought I'd give you a final look at what this is all finished up like. You can see everything sealed in there. There was a little bit of snagging to do on the day after this when it finally dried up. But I'm very, very happy to say that the roof is now completely 100% watertight. Now if you know us and you know the channel, you know that we are not professionals in any way. So I'm purely showing you my experiences and what I learned along the way. Before this, I'd never been on a roof, so I'm in not any way trying to tell you how to do things. Uh, but do look around and don't take everything on face value. There's a lot of bad advice out there as well. But if you do your research, it's doable as a DIY job if you're crazy enough. Anyway. There we go. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.